So let's see, ah, you hear me, great, great. Hi, I hope, just make sure that you, you know, can see me or move around or whatever so that uh, those 20 minutes will be valuable for you and you're not just thinking about how bad placed you are or something. So this theme, uh, I've been thinking a little bit about this. Is it possible to fast forward team trust in a world where we constantly put together new teams and constantly need to be flexible and move? Is, it, is there a way that the relationships that you know you have with the people that you've been working with for a long time and is most probably very creative, is there a way for us as facilitators or leaders to fast forward that? I don't know, but I thought we, I'll, I'll share a couple of thoughts to see if you would agree that there is a way. So I'm Lisa, like you said to introduce me, and I run an experienced design firm uh, called Doberman, and we do digital product, service design, and innovation capability. And I'm not going to show you anything else of what we do. You can go to our site or something. Because uh, I want to talk to you about creativity. I could also have said innovation. Because I think that those are words that are super related to each other. Uh, but today I chose the word creativity. And as you probably know, what we very often as creatives work with is help our clients to design a great customer journey. And we also know that designing this great customer journey is easy to do on paper, but then we need to have an organization to deliver on this, right? And when I think about creativity and running a design firm, it's the exact same way. So, you know, I need to have my organization to deliver the best for our clients and to give them a great customer journey. And very often we look at organizations like this with different departments or silos. But basically what it's all about is this. Organizations are all built from people. And it's so often we talk about it in abstract terms instead of talking about what it's really about. It's about people. And it's about how we make these talent work better together to perform better. And I would like you to start, or maybe very soon. So maybe the executive summary of how to get those to be more creative is to start with openness. Openness towards yourself. Openness towards your colleague, openness towards your organization, your business, your clients and the consumers. And I would like to start uh, by having you close your eyes. I'm watching you. Now you are all closed your eyes. And it's going to be very difficult to do this in a loud environment, but I'm going to try. So, so feel that you're grounded. Put your feet on the ground. Take a deep breath. It's Friday morning. It's a great weekend coming. Take a deep breath. And try to remember a moment where you felt that you had flow. You know, when everything around you just disappeared because you were in your essence, 
this is what you were meant to be doing. Try to remember such moment. And try to remember what you were thinking about in that moment. And what you were feeling in that moment. And how did you sound? Was it a quiet moment or were you loud? How was your body gestures? Try to remember how it felt to be the creative person that you really, really are. And from this small exercise, I'm going to challenge you to frame this and synthesize this into one word for yourself. How is it when you're super creative? And when you feel that you're done, you can open your eyes. And you're not going to do it now because I don't have time. But if you would take that word of how it is for you when you are creative and you would use that word and share that with your colleague, you're starting that openness journey. You're starting to talk about what you need since I think that this comes from within. I'm very curious, by the way, about the words. So, can I, you know, m understand those words without knowing them? Well, I've tried by thinking a lot about how I design the employee experience for the people who work at Doberman. Because this is all I have. I only have talent. This is what I sell. So this is kind of the most important investment that I do, is to make sure that I take care of this creativity that sits from within people. How can I do that? Well, first of all, I think it's important that we do invest, that we do stop our ordinary work for days and think about what people need as persons and in individuals to have a better flow or a be better way of working. And for me, that is about sharing how your, maybe it's about sharing how your last couple of three months been, like Joanne is doing here. Oh, it's an awful projector, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so that he could then, by explaining how it's been for him, open up and ask for help. Because if this were my lows, the couple of three months, then, and I'll share that with you, then you will start help me to make that change. We do not have to make any action lists. Or it could look like this. This is also an investment that we did uh, two months ago where people were asked uh, to go out and explore a feeling. So I don't know if you see this here, but they are exploring how it is to be a 10-year-old. They're exploring how it is to face your fears. He's really scared of heights. Another person really scared of dogs. Uh, we call Doberman, by the way. Uh, and they are experiencing, well, these people went to a tattoo place, so they're experiencing feelings. And of course, one of the reasons to do that is to get a better empathy for the consumers we're designing for. But most importantly, if you start to experience feelings with your colleagues, you're opening up. You're deep in your relationships, and then you can start to do more complex things together. So it looks like fun, but it's super serious. It's about every little detail count. 
So if uh, do you know what this is? This is a German Thursday. <laughs> this is the session where we share our projects with each other. And it's just that, that little detail of having hats there. I, I know it looks ridiculous, but it's designing an employee experience that you feel, this was designed for us. Inter it's an internal conference, but it's still invested in that. Designing an employee experience for me is also creating a language so that we can be open towards each other, so that everyone is invited to be participating in building our company for real. And I have a management language. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I speak Excel and my colleagues don't. So I've been thinking about how can I translate my language into a creative language. So can you imagine what Stina is looking at here? What do you think that she's measuring? Just have a guess? No? Revenue could be. It's not, but it could be, yeah. Economy could be. She's measuring quality. <laughs> So, you know, to create a language between each other, what is quality? I don't know about you, but, you know, we, we creatives, we do have different views of what quality is. Yeah? It could be, it's quality when the client is happy, or it's quality uh, when my best designer friends think it's good, or it's quality uh, when the craft is great, or it's quality when the process was amazing. So we, I had to design a language where we can talk about this. So each pearl is representing one of these subjects that we decided is quality. And for us, when we think that we are happy about a project, it needs to be up here. I can talk so much more about this if you want to. And yes, I've also created a way for us to talk about economy in Lego. I'm not going to go into it more than think about the language if you're going to create a, a creative environment so that everyone is invited. And speaking about money in Lego terms is so much easier than in Excel. And what happens when I start to design an employee experience like this is that the organization is then continuously developing new methods for how they would like our culture to be. So these are just examples of things that we're using internally for our internal meetings. Again, remember, this is an investment in your own creativity internally that my colleagues developed. I had no responsibility over this. And this is what happened in September when I came to work. This is not me. It was my colleagues who designed the fall in balloons so that we could share. This is what's going on at Doberman this fall. And everyone can go and grab a balloon and say, oh, German Thursday in November <laughs> or what else. And that happens if you start to design and be careful about the employee experience, then employees start to design themselves. And for me, it's been a lot about saying yes, even when my gut feeling says no. Because <laughs> I think there's so many great ideas that are destroyed by the first no's. And I'm saying yes at silly ideas in the beginning, because then I know that will foster better ideas. So I'm not saying that uh, the greatest ideas will come from the beginning in building such culture, but if you start by saying yes, then they will come. Here's a couple of examples. So I said yes to this toilet design. I mean, it's, it sounds silly. Why did she say, you know, is that an important thing? Well, if you foster a culture where you say yes to things like this, then other things will come. Yes, I said yes to a workshop locker. Yes, I said yes to a Berlin think tank. And this is a great example of an idea that was popping up internally what if we would have a workshop space in Berlin because we feel more creative there? And I said, oh, expensive, 
But Head said, you're supposed to say yes. Okay, yes, we've been having this for four years and it's something with this place that makes us perform better. We even created our own little app about you know, the best tips about what we do in Berlin. I also said yes to not having meetings on Fridays because what, when I asked my colleagues, when they closed their eyes and, and the word, no one said meetings is the place where I feel most creative. No one. Okay, then we maybe need to get rid of the meetings so that you can be creative. So on Fridays, we do not have meetings and you're allowed to be wherever in the world to do what you're supposed to do. We've been trying this for a couple of years now. Again, my gut feeling said, oh God, what will the client say? Uh, by the way, they also do not like meetings. <laughs> so it's been going pretty well. I also said yes to plus menu. So this is when it starts to get really interesting and when I'm saying that the you know, culture of saying yes is bringing up some great ideas, plus menu is the way that we pay our people because people do not only want to have salary anymore, they also want to have vacation, uh, gym card, education. So at Doberman you can pick what you would like to have as like your benefits package instead of us making that. I can tell you more about this later. I also said yes to this idea. Where in the world should we have our next office? When the organization said New York, again, now it was my head saying, that's the most difficult place in the world. It is. How many Swedish agencies have you heard that go, you know, went there and did not succeed? But I've trained myself to say yes. And I asked how many of you would like to go? Everyone said yes. Okay, wrong question. Uh, how many of you would like to move <laughs> to New York? Five people. Then I asked the five people, could you make the plan? This is our business plan, by the way, uh, for real. This is what I presented to the board. So they did. This is an amazing plan made by fa the five people who were going there. It's an establishing phase. No, testing phase, establishing phase, maturing phase. It, here it says December 2014. Yes, we are here. We did it. We made it. Because it was the people, the talent, who was driving this idea with their own creativity and me trusting them that made this office succeed. And yet, if you do this internally, this will stimulate how you perform with your clients as well. Because first you need to feel that you're trusted to do it internally and then you'll start doing it with your clients. So this is maybe what a, a typical workshop looks when it's designed uh, in my office. This is an innovation workshop for a magazine company. I just have a couple of minutes. I'm not going to go into all of these examples or making a future workshop with a bank. But I think what's important is that you don't have to over-design. Just this simple statement having key people in different roles in an organization to have to stimulate their creativity but also lower the barriers for them to participate even if the bosses were in the room taking off the shoes like this something happens i mean something happens with me new <laughs> again like oh who i feel a little bit naked <laughs> Something happens if you design the meeting or the culture to get the most out of the people in the room. You cannot tell, but this is a, a venture capitalist. <laughs> Uh, and, and, this is a, in, and this is a couple of people in the startup where he invested. <laughs> and to have them better collaborate about a future product and to understand the consumers who in this case, can you guess what their target group is? Maybe not. Okay, I can tell you, it's weddings. So he's the bride, he's the groom. <laughs> 
they had to walk in the shoes of the target group together. The VC and the startup and us helping them to better understand what is this product about. That is fast forwarding their trust. That's fast forwarding their abilities to become more creative together. So that was actually my last example. And now, because, look. Thank you. 20 great minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you.